Okay, I hope this works. I'm using my better computer now, which doesn't, it's in 32 bits, so it doesn't have problem recording like this. The other one does. And as you can see, it's a little bigger. Um, I could make it better still, but I don't think I'm going to need to do that for this particular video. I'm taking you now back to um, Matthew 24 and 25. And again, we're still on the theme of proving that this meter thing is real. I've taken you sort of on a side trip, first of all, to show you other passages that have meter after the 42nd video in this series, which was the introduction to Hive is about Donald Trump. And I had to take a side trip because it's like, that's coming out of left field. How do you know that? Which is a valid question, of course. And so then I first had to take you to other passages after the 42nd video that showed you, hi, you know, there are other passages that are like this. It, it's just that this happens to be the Matthew 24, 25 passage that's doing the same thing the other ones are. Okay? And the fact that it might have to do with our lives right now, well, isn't that what Bible is supposed to be for? Instead of getting all wagged out, Okay? Then, I had to take you on yet another side trip after showing you other passages that, yes, use the same style. Um, that, you know, the reformers could have known all this. Sorry about my voice cracking, I've been sick. The reformers could have known about all this. They've been even trying to figure it out since 1549 minimum. Okay. And I took you on those side trips to show you that, yes, books were published. They were trying to match the meter. And one of the guys even tried to do it with Revelation, how well they did it. Not too good, because the guy who was the foremost, you know, proponent of the Bible meter, a guy named Robert Loth, that was in the last two episodes, he didn't even know how to count the syllables. Okay? But at least that was 1700s, and you can see, oh, well, you know, Brainout's not bringing this up out of thin air. No. Now I'm going to show you proof from within the Bible itself. In the upper window here, of course, is Matthew 24, and we're at the beginning of Matthew 24 again. And here is Luke, which is the same passage content. Okay, people always say, you know, oh, we don't understand why the, there are four Gospels instead of just one. Well, there's a reason for it, and here we're going to start to see the reason. And if we knew the meter, we'd know the reason faster. It's really embarrassing how we haven't paid any attention to what the Bible says for 500 years, even though we sort of suspected that there might be something going on with the meter. Okay, well, Luke knows what's going on with the meter. Because looky here, okay, up the top window, Matthew 24, 25, bottom window, Luke's repeating of the words, okay, in Luke 21, but it's a heck of a lot shorter. Now, I want you to notice something. You go all the way down to this thing, okay, you see here, learn the parable of fig tree. See how this ends at 1082? You see how this is 1036, 1050, and 1071? Now let's take a look at Luke. Well, well, Luke ends his not only with the same 1036, 1050, 1071, but the text is different. But he ends it at 1085 instead of 1082. And his, his whole thing stops there. Whereas in Matthew, it goes on to, to, to finish off that part. And then it goes on to, to chapter 25, which is really the same part of the same chapter. Talking about, the, you know, the five foolish virgins, which is where we get into our modern history. You know, this is where I've been talking. See right here? That's 2015 and 2016. It's not the second courier, it's the first one. Okay. All right. That's where that's that's our year. Actually, we're at the beginning of this, 2017. Okay? So, if there's there's some kind there's been a lot of history that's gone on. So, there should be some kind of common theme that keeps on being developed. And at least for the first 1000 years, we can see it right in Luke. So, it's not like Brainout is making this up. I'm learning it from the text.
Not making it up. I mean, I don't like Donald Trump, but that's beside the point. Okay? Luke stops his whole, stops his discourse repeating these words right there at 108.5. Why? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. But you'll notice, I mean, it's really not too hard to look at the screen, even though you can't read the Greek. 1036, which stands for 1066 AD, which is the Norman Conquest, and this is all about the Normans. Okay? It's again here, it's so important that Luke repeats it. 1050, of course, is a basic civilization unit. So it ends here. And Luke goes to the trouble. See, look at this. This is, this is what really keyed me into it. Apo de te sukis matete ten parabolen. In my badly pronounced Greek. Okay? Basic matete means learn. It's a command. Doesn't have to be a command, but it is. Learn from the fig tree. The parable. 1050. Add 30 to it. And what year is that? 1080 AD. And what has just happened? Jerusalem has been overrun. And when is she overrun? Right here. See, this is 1036, so that stands for 1066. I want you to see how precise this is, okay? 1066, Norman invasion. 67, 68, Apple. Alright? 69, duh. 70, tes. The beginning of the word sukes, which means fig tree. Okay? So that's 68, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 10, 72, 80. You know what happened then? You should. Jerusalem was overrun by the Arabs. And fig tree is the nickname for Israel. You should know that. I mean, practically every pastor on the planet knows that. All right, so he's setting, he's the precision of Jerusalem being taken over by the Arabs. I think it was the, the Seljuk Turks, but it might have been a different group of Turks or a different group of Arabs. I forget which one. Really famous stories going with that because he defeated Byzantium first. But the point is that very year, see, he could have put this in different order, but he didn't. Because he knows, you know, he's God. He foreknows. Suitcase. Israel. And that's when she gets overrun. And this is the proximate cause of the Crusades. So it's like, whoa, were the Crusades pro-God or something? That it's sevens? No. We're going to get to that in a minute. Because it has to do with why, you know, I'm reading and telling you what I'm telling you about 2016. So look. Luke... Writing 35 years later, or 28 years later, see, because his, see right here. Hi, I'm writing 28 years after Christ died. The same date line that James will use. Which is 35 years before the millennium was scheduled to start had there been no church. So the total is 63. And of course, back up here, same date line. So you see, he's, he's, He's paying real close attention to Luke's syllable counts. He's using it to validate what he's telling you. He's datelining his own stuff, and he's using the same 63, which is also what he uses in Luke 1. Hi, I'm writing you 63 years after Elizabeth got pregnant. Okay. So, he's paying attention to syllable counts to validate. He expects you to know these syllable counts. See, here's a hundred. Here's a hundred. Now he rounds it at one, he he sevens it at one twelve, whereas the Lord used one sixteen. And the question is why? The answer is I'm not a hundred percent sure. I got some ideas though. Okay. So the Lord is sevening in at different places from Luke, and Luke is also moving the text around. There's text in here. And he moves up, like right here, okay? Blepete me planetete. That's in Luke at 1.12. But look, that same text 
is right here with a couple extra words in it. Plepete me des humes planese. Okay? Luke moves it up here. Why? But you can see it's deliberate. I hope you can see it's deliberate. He moves the text around. And he's paying real close attention to the original syllable counts in Matthew when he does it. Now, I don't know, 90,000 alarm bells ought to go off in your head. Hey, wait a minute, this is deliberate. Brainard is showing something that deliberate, that one Bible writer is doing to another Bible writer, which means Matthew was first. You got all these ding-dongs running around. Some of them are pretty famous scholars, too, saying, Oh, well, Matthew's not really the first gospel, or it's not really in Greek. And did they count syllables? No, obviously. Because if you did, you'd notice, oh, wait a minute. Luke is playing on Matthew's syllable count. See, 63, 100. And then he's moving the words around. Because here it is. Blepete me planete te Okay. But that's down here in Matthew. So why did Luke move it? Inquiring minds want to know. Okay. But before we get to all that, I just want to show you how it ends. Because, you see, this is really clever. All right. See, 63... The millennium was supposed to start 63 years after Christ, after the end of the year in which Christ died. The millennium was supposed to start had there been no church. So when Christ is doing his little reconciliation, he's adding 63 to all of his totals. And you have to understand that that's what he's doing, he's reconciling it. So when you get down here, this is 3150, which is three ten fifties. Plus 63, plus 7 for the tribulation, because you really can't predict when the rapture is going to happen. See? Now watch. Luke is doing the same thing. Remember up here? Luke is doing 35 here. So 1050 plus 35 is what? Ding, 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 ding. 1085. So he's not really stopping at the end of the time either very clearly because the Lord's goes on for 3220. He stops his at 8, 8, 1085, but you'll notice it's the same style. See? Hi, I'm writing 35 years before the millennium is supposed to start, which of course is that's why the sum of it is 63. Because you remember that from Matthew, don't you? Yeah, you do if you learn the meter. And oh, okay, so I'm going to use the same accounting style to you 1050 plus the number of years to the millennium because that's what Christ did in Matthew. Okay, well, I'm going to have to stop because it looks like my voice hasn't healed enough yet. But I hope you got out of this lesson. If nothing else, it's like, hey, wait a minute. Okay, this thing, this thing is being copied by Luke. Yeah. Copy by Luke. On purpose. And at the ending, he's even he's even 70. See? Copy. Copy. And instead of using 84, he's using 85. So therefore, if he's not if he's copying one off, why is that? Does that mean we have a mistake? Yeah, could be. Could be some other reason. Could be something he wants to stick out. A hundred. A hundred. And then we go all the way down here. And he doesn't only just match, he's matching them, bing, 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 bing. See? 1036, 1036, which is the Norman invasion. 1080, that's with Jerusalem taken over at exactly where Sukkis occurs. That's what will happen in history. We know it because we got the history to know it. See? And then he also 1050, 1050, 1071. 1071. Why does he link those numbers? I don't know. But can you see something? It's clear he's counting Matthew's syllables. So this isn't something Brainout is making up. It's something that at best you can say I'm observing and then you'll find out whether my observations are right or not because seeing this methodology means you're learning how to observe it yourself. 
That's the whole point. Peace out.